So let's continue our discussion on the heat engine. Recall that in any cyclical heat engine, the change in temperature is equal to zero. And that's because in any cyclical process, we begin at some initial position and end up at that same initial position. So our initial and final temperatures are exactly the same. Now, because the change in internal energy depends on the change in temperature and because the change in temperature is zero, the change in internal energy of our system is also zero. Now, according to the second law of thermodynamics, we know that the change in internal energy of our system is equal to the net heat flow into our system minus the net work done by our system on the surroundings. Now, because the delta the internal energy is zero, this quantity is zero. And so we have zero is equal to net Q minus net W. So if we rearrange this equation, we get the following result. The Q net is equal to the W net. So that basically states that all the energy or the net energy flow as a result of heat into our system is equal to the net work done by our system. So let's go to the following schematic of a cyclical heat engine. So our energy begins to flow from our object at the high temperature and it flows in this direction towards the object at the lower temperature. And as it flows this way, some of that energy is transformed into work. So the amount of energy that leaves this hot object QH is equal to QL plus W net. Now we can take that equation, rearrange it, and we get the following result. The net work is equal to the difference QH minus QL. And let's call this equation 1. Now equation 1 is confirmed by the second law of thermodynamics. The net heat flow is equal to the net work done. So Q net is equal to W net. Now, let's define something that is known as the efficiency of a heat engine. So the efficiency of a heat engine given by lowercase e is simply the ratio of the net work done by the engine to the energy input at the high temperature. So we can represent that in equation notation. So our E is equal to W net divided by QH. Now from equation one, because W net is equal to QH minus QL, we can represent it in the following manner. Our E efficiency of our heat engine is equal to QH minus QL divided by QH. Now, if we divide every value by QH, we get the following result. 1 minus the ratio of QL divided by QH is equal to E, the efficiency of our heat engine. Now, what exactly is the efficiency? Well, the efficiency E of the heat engine tells us the fraction of thermal energy that is converted, that is transformed into mechanical energy. It tells us the fraction of heat that is transformed into work. Now, if we take this fraction and multiply by 100%, we get the percentage of heat that is transformed into work. So 1 minus QL divided by QH multiplied by 100% gives us the percentage. So we go from fraction to percentage. Now, notice the following result. If our QL becomes very small, then this fraction QL divided by QH approaches zero. And if QL is zero, then this entire result goes to zero and our efficiency becomes one. So efficiency of one simply means that our engine is 100% efficient in converting the heat into work. Now, the smaller the value of QL, the greater the efficiency, as I just mentioned. However, it has been found that QL cannot be brought to zero. And so, an engine with E equal to zero does not exist.
And this directly leads to the following statement called the Kelvin-Planck statement for the second law of thermodynamics. So the second law of thermodynamics can essentially be rewritten in the following manner. No device exists whose purpose is to completely convert heat into work. So basically an engine with an E value of 1 does not exist. So let's look at the following example. A car's engine has an efficiency of 20%, so that means our E value is 0 0.2. It produces on average 20,000 joules of mechanical work. In part A, how much heat is required, and in part B, how much heat is discharged. So in part A, we're looking for QH, and in part B, we're looking for our QL. So to find the QH, we want to use this equation. So we know the E and we know the W net, so we can rearrange and solve for our QH. So QH is equal to the ratio of the work to our efficiency. So 20,000 joules divided by 0 0.2 gives us 100,000 joules of work of heat is required. Now let's go to part B. How much heat is discharged? So we want to calculate the QL. To find the QL, we have to use this equation. So we take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for the QL. QL is equal to the product of QH and 1 minus E. Now 1 minus E is 0 0.8, and our QH was found to be 100,000 joules. So that means 0.8 multiplied by 100,000 gives us 80,000 joules of heat. So that means 80,000 joules of heat must be discharged into our cold object so that we have 20,000 joules of usable work.